Hi, Hunters. This is your weekly social emotional learning lesson. This week, we are going to be talking about stress and stressors that we all face, especially at the end of the school year. And then we're also just going to work through some skills that you can use on your own wherever you are to kind of help manage some of that stress. So first, what is stress? We all encounter stress on a daily basis. And again, like, like I just said, the end of the school year can bring on unique stressors as you're trying to wrap up all of your classes, you're finishing final projects, tests, maintaining friendships and relationships, um, it, while you're also focusing on, on your homework and getting everything done. Um, if you're a senior, you may be finalizing plans for college. If you're a junior, you may be starting to think about college applications and scholarships for next year. Uh, you may be looking for a summer job. And again, the deadlines of it all, the, the pressure to get it done by a certain time. And it's very easy to start feeling very overwhelmed, especially at the end of the school year. So we're going to watch a brief video as you're watching it. Just reflect on how you might be able to relate to some of the stories that these teens are talking about. Stress is now a part of our daily lives. In September of 2018, 70% of U.S. teenagers said that anxiety and depression were the top concerns among their peers in a survey done by the Pew Research Center. Stress is like what they say, number one killer, right? I would say at least 90% of the students that I see have a level of stress and about 75% of my students have high levels of anxiety. And I've been very surprised like the the amount of pressure that they seem to be under to, to figure out their life right now, right before you know they graduate and with testing and scores and just and then on top of that friendship issues, relationship issues, things at home. So I have noticed that it just seems more than what I've dealt with in the past. Um, like especially this pressure to like succeed at the school level. Um, things that tend to stress me out <laughs> are things like school, um, having to handle things at home, and I don't know, work, a lot of work. I felt like having AP classes, honor classes, and just like classes, general speaking, um, and then me also working and dancing and doing like a lot of stuff on the side, that impacts me a lot. We have social media, we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, where, you know, as great as those sources are where we could connect with our friends, but it could um, very easily turn the negative. When you see the stress, they could be tired, sleeping in class, they could be crying, they could be, or even more um, different emotion that, that us teachers see. Physically, sometimes, like, you don't have time to eat or something or you're just so stressed that it ju you just get to the point where you're just like, oh my God, you have so much stuff in your mind and you just want to cry or like do a mental breakdown or something. You start seeing that the effects not only physically and emotionally, but you'll notice maybe you're having a hard time sleeping, you're more irritable, or you have a lot of mood swings, like you might feel sad or jittery, um, feeling physically tired as well, not feeling creative. So we can feel sad and worried, but if we get stuck feeling those because of stress, then that's when it turns into anxiety and depression. Stress can cause stomach aches, headaches, migraines, all these types of things. Um, some kids talking about trying weed or um, to some extremes that I've, I've dealt with a cutting. I feel like if we have like longer like periods and less homework, then that would kind of like even out the three pillars, eating, sleeping, and exercise. Those things are the natural ways in which to manage your stress. That is just, uh, don't hide it. We, everyone deals with stress. Uh, high school students, teachers, adults, little kids. Uh, just make sure you're talking to someone. If it's something where it's really bothering you, uh, talk to someone. If you see it taking over, that's when, you know, there's things that there's resources, outlets that, you know, um, people can help you with. So one of the most important steps in being able to take control over uh, those overwhelming feelings or feeling stressed out is really understanding what is stress and what is leading to these feelings. So when we think of stress, when you hear those stories of those teens, um, stress really has two components. One is the stressor. 
So that's a change in the environment that you perceive as threatening, challenging, new, or new. So it's so the first component is the stressor. And that's a change in the environment. So a change in, in the situation that you perceive as threatening, challenging, or new, and that it feels overwhelming. So it feels like something that, that you aren't going to be able to cope with. So this is the situation that happens. And the second part of stress is your body's response. And this is a universal human response to those situations that feel overwhelming or challenging. Um, and the response, there's a physical, biological response, a mental response, and an emotional response. Because it's your body pre preparing you to address the stressor. And this is how your mind and body responds. In a previous lesson, we talked about, about the body response. Um, and next year, we'll get into this more. But for purposes of this lesson, just remember that there are the, that stress is really the situation and then how your mind and body respond. So these are some types of stressors. Think about your life. Um, think about the, the stories in that video um, as we go through these different types of stressors. The first is significant life changes. This can include things like graduating, ending a relationship of any kind, not having that person in your life on a daily basis, whether that's a friendship, um, a, a, having your teacher going to the same class every day, that's ending a relationship. Um, and then going to a new school, whether it's college or you're, you're moving to a new school, those are all examples of significant life changes. They're things that happen to you personally that you then have to adjust to. The next category is catastrophic events or crisis. These are more global. They happen to large groups of people um, and, and not just you individually. These are things like a flood that, that comes to your community or a hurricane or one that impacted us all this year, COVID. So these, these are things that, that happen to a community, to a large population of people who then, um, so you not only individually have to adjust to it, but collectively as a community have to adjust to the situation as well. The next category is environmental factors. So these are stressors that are just embed, embedded into the environment that you're in. So if you take school, for example, these factors include the noise level that can cause you stress. Crowding the number of kids in a classroom or in the hallway, that can be stressful. Or if you take it broader than the school community, um, just out in the Duluth community in general, pollution would be an example of an environmental factor that may not be something that you think about or impact your daily life on a daily basis, but it is something that is always there in the background um, that, that does, does impact. And this is another one uh, that impacts a large population of people, not just you individually. And the final type of stressor is everyday hassles. This is, again, a category that happens to you personally. These are things that are are stressful to you as an individual and they're things they're just normal daily things that we all encounter such as making decisions about things uh, conflict with others whether it's positive conflict or negative conflict and homework those are three examples of everyday hassles everyday hassles are kind of the, those minor annoyances that maybe in the moments aren't really that significant but over time, the stress related to those things isn't always resolved because it isn't always something significant. So the, the stress response continues, and over time, that can really take a toll on your body and your mind. 
So you can't always control or even stop those stressors from happening, especially the daily hassles. Those are things that just happen and they're just part of life. But, so even though you can't control or you can't stop them, you can use healthy coping strategies to help your body and your mind respond in a positive way to help you meet the challenges presented by those stressors. So in this lesson, we're talking about grounding skills or strategies that you use to put your focus and your attention to keep your mind in the present moment. So you, you're going to be focusing on what's happening right now because that, that gives you control over the situation regardless of what the stressor is and it helps your body to be re relaxed and it blocks that stress hormone, the cortisol, from being released in your body. And so there's four types of grounding exercises. The first one is the five, four, three, two, one exercise. And this is you're using your five senses to help you be aware of what's going on around you. So in order to do this, you start by taking a deep breath, a belly breath, and then you name five things that you can see, four things that you can feel, and feel can be things like I can feel my shoe on the ground. I can feel my foot in my shoe. I can feel my hand on the table, those kind of things. And then you name three things you can hear, two things that you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And tasting might be, I can taste the iced coffee I had this morning. I can taste the gum I'm chewing. I can taste the toothpaste in my mouth from this morning. If you can't taste anything or your mind isn't going there in the moment, you can just name your favorite thing. And these are things, so if you're by yourself and you want to say them out loud, fantastic. Otherwise, this is a skill you can use when you're by yourself um, or when you're with others and you can still use it uh, by just mentally in your mind listing these things. And then after you have gone through the five, four, three, two, one, then you end with the same deep breath, the belly breath that you've started the exercise with. The next grounding strategy is called quick mental grounding. And again, these are ones you can do anywhere in any situation. You can talk out loud to yourself if you're alone or if you're with friends um, or if you're feeling stressed out in the middle of class, you can absolutely do these in your head. The first one is to start just listing your favorite things. So in your mind, just say, my favorite season is summer. My favorite food is spaghetti. My favorite color is blue. My favorite animal is a penguin. So just list your favorite things until you can feel your body. You can feel your breathing slow, your body relax, your muscles relax, and you can feel your thoughts slowing down. You can also say the alphabet slowly start with A and then just A and then count one, two in your head, B, just do it slowly. Again, the object is to get your mind focused on something other than the stress in order to slow your mind down and then slow your breathing down and relax your body. And then you can, another quick mental grounding thing is your favorite song or just a song you like and just start slowly saying the lyrics either out loud or in your head. The next kind of grounding skills are called physical grounding. So these are things that you're gonna do that, that give you a, an outwardly physical sensation to uh, bring you to the present mo moment. So this, or this is things like getting up and moving around, jumping, up and down, jumping jacks, or doing some stress, stretches, yoga. You can also make a fist and then release it. So that's called, well, it's part of progressive muscle relaxation, but, but it's muscle relaxation. So you're tensing your, your fist, you're making those muscles tense, and then you're releasing that tension. You can also run water over your hands. It can be warm water or cold water. Try them both, see which, which one works better for you. Some people's bodies respond better to the cold, some to the hot. Um, the cold is typically more alerting and then the hot is more relaxing. And then some people also carry small objects around in their pocket, 
like a stone, if you've ever heard of the term worry stone, or a seashell is small enough, or just a, a piece of fabric, like uh, a piece of an old t-shirt. Then you have that in your pocket and you can reach in and touch it when you're feeling stress, stressed or worried. And then the last type of grounding skill technique you can use is called present focused self-talk. So again, the object is to focus your attention on where you are physically right now. So you're not visualizing where you wanna be, you're focusing on the environment that you are in right now. And you're gonna notice and describe what you see going on around you. So this is an example, if you're at the beach, if you're at Brighton Beach along Lake Superior, you're gonna say things or think things like, I see the waves of Lake Superior. I see people swimming. I see the waves hitting the sand. I see seagulls on the waves. I can feel drops of water landing on my feet. I can feel the wind blow through my hair. So again, you're using your five senses and you're noticing and describing what is going on where you are right now. So as we wrap up this lesson, here are some reflection questions for you to just think through. And now to finish this week's social emotional learning lesson, you are going to answer the, the very last question of this video quiz that'll be at the very end of this video. And then you also need to click on the link that's in the module or in the assignment page um, for the social emotional learning lesson. Click that link, it'll take you to the exit ticket and you click on that and you complete it and submit it and then you are done with social emotional learning for the week. Thank you hunters, have a great week.